Welcome to part two modeling. I'm going to start with a spline circle. Create the shape of the trim around the clock face. Start with spline, enable render and enable in viewport. Set your thickness, set eight sides and 20 segments. You can do that with the interpolation steps. So I'll copy it across, we're going to use it in a few minutes. Convert to an edible poly. Select that edge ring. Control click to convert your selection to faces and delete those faces. Now I'm just shift dragging border sub object selection. I'm going to delete that raw polys as well. Now we're going to do the same double click the edge to grab the loop. Control click on the faces to convert the selection, delete that, move it in. I'm going to scale that one up according to the reference. And once you have it uh, positioned, then we're going to weld up those borders. So I'll attach that one, select the two open borders. Scaling that down a bit just to match up. Now select the two borders and click bridge to bridge those borders. Now they're attached and welded. Now I'm using the swift loop tool to insert the support edges. So when we subdivide it, just add a turbo smooth to subdivide up your iterations. Now we can check it with edge faces turned off. Just have a quick look at the reference. See how we're fixed. Have a look around from all angles and make sure you're happy. With sub D modeling, you can often get dense and undulations in the mesh, so you have to just watch out for that. So I'm going to select that and center, convert and delete because I want to adjust it. So I deleted those. Now select that edge loop again, double click, remember. And I'm using normal constraints to the normal and moving it on the normal. Now I'm going to shift that. Sorry, I'm using chamfer tool there to split the edges. The swift loop tool again. This is just adding support loops, so you get a nice crease. Very important when sub D modeling. So that's that part finished. Now we're going to create the the central cylindrical part. So for this part, <coughs> I'm not going to use sub D's because uh, there's a small rectangle where the hammer comes out in the center. It's actually quite difficult to cut square shapes into curved surfaces without getting uh, those dents I was talking about. So we just start with a cylinder primitive <coughs> up the sides till it's smooth. And now, you know, just adding in a couple of segments there. Now when we, when we cut out the, uh, the rectangular shape, it doesn't really matter because it won't be getting subdivided. So I'm just scaling it down, moving it into position, just eyeballing it. Move it in again. Now I'm going to go to the top view, press T, swift loop again. Sorry, I'm actually going to uh, ring select those edges. Oops, that was a mistake. Use chamfer instead of connect. Use connect, set two edges, and then we can use the pinch to slide them across, constrained to the edges to where we want them. Top view again, T, shortcut. I'm just uh, 
going to the hierarchy tab and affecting the pivot center and the pivot back up and that shape alright so we select those polys that we want to cut out that rectangular shape you can see in the reference So you can just uh, once you're happy the selection just hit delete now select the border scale it in slightly it's scaling non uniformly so you can just scale it on the Y there just to square it up bring it down slightly to create a, a chamfer and then shift drag that border down again now I'm just using swift loop holding down shift to maintain the volume I've added in two more loops and now I'm going to shift select and two polys to select the ring hit grow to expand the selection Ooh. sorry yeah I'm just going to ring select on more than likely no double click the edge convert the polys control click and then just grow set the sh uh, smooth group to it onto a different number two there, a different group any group Right, so now you can see that hole's been cut out without the need to the headache, so you know, sub D modeling for those kind of shapes are notoriously difficult. So I'm using the mirror tool. Where am I? No. It's not working, it's uh, the, the normals are inverted, I think, so it's just easier to use a symmetry modifier, select the correct axis, and then hit flip sub object mirror we can move it flip it back and just move that into position check the reference again on a width once we're happy now center it up we can uh, select those two edge loops and control backspace to get rid of them we don't need them now selecting those two <coughs> large polygons, deleting them. Now select two borders, control click on the vert, uh, convert it to a vert selection, and then just scale them out. So control clicking is a uh, it's very handy selection. Max actually has some brilliant selection tools. Once you get used to them, you can pretty much make any kind of selection you want using different combinations. Just going to scale that up another little bit. Have a look around at the model from all angles. Check the reference again. Now we're going to modify this at the back of the clock. So we can select that border. Control click on faces and then grow the selection. Delete them. Border selection again. Now scale them in scale again with sub D modeling you usually want to maintain quads but on a flat surface like this that end on in the middle isn't going to matter you, you, you won't see the, the pinching on a flat surface so that's the back filled in now that's pretty much the main clock body finished so we're going to create these bells these are very simple start a sphere primitive oh I must be clear it's the nut sorry I think I'm creating a nut next time yeah uh, created from a cylinder primitive with six sides that gives you a hexagonal shape the same as a nut delete those two faces don't need them now I'm just going to use the connect tool so that's just walk your way around select those two edges and hit connect once you've set up with three edges in the in the dialog box it'll remember your settings so you can just click it without having to open that every time now you can go around and select these verts from the newly created edges just going to move them up slightly to create a bit of curvature now select the border shift drag it again favorite poly modeling technique shift drag scale bring it right in we don't need to cap that that won't be seen 
there's a little uh, round head on the nut. So I can select those faces, grow them and scale them down to flatten the mill. And now I'm going to go around and select all these edges on each corner. You can double click to select the loop. Use the, ooh, the extrude tool with zero extrusion height and then just offset the base width. It's just a quick way of adding support edges. Now I'm going to go around and select all these sets of verts on the corners. I could have modeled this with symmetry, but it doesn't really matter, it's quick enough to model. So we add a turbo smooth. Have a look around the shape. Now I'm going to just select that border and scale it out again to flatten those edges. Move them up. Now add a symmetry mod below the turbo smooth. Find your axis. If you can set your pivot point up so you don't have to mess around with the mirror, but when you're modeling, you you know you, it's you're trying to go as quickly as you can, so you, you know you can use whatever's whatever tool is easiest, closest to hand. So I'm just going to right-click the threshold of symmetry. I'm working on a small scale here now. I scale it down, so you just have to make sure that no verts get collapsed with the threshold and the symmetry modifier so you can right click and click up once on the spinner to uh, well, co well coincident verts, verts that are on top of each other pretty much I've turned off symmetry mod I'm just going to add some more support loops with the swift loop tool check again orbit around now this nut is going to be you know generally it's only going to occupy whatever 50 square pixels or whatever on the screen in the final render so it doesn't have to be perfect but you know you can spend more time and get a if you want to get a closer ref pick of the nut and just practice your modeling but uh i've made so many of these different shapes and sizes once you have a library then build up you can buy it I would have just imported this from a library I have of ones I've built over the years, but sure, wouldn't be much use to people watching a tutorial, huh? So I'm double clicking again on these edges and I'm chamfering them out just to create an extra support edge in there just to harden up those corners, crease them. I'm work, as I said I'm working on a small scale so I have to type in there right usually you can just click the spinners but that should be pretty much finished no no I just deleted that it was creating a, an unsightly kind of a crease now to click right the top part I just created a sphere primitive and shift A is the uh, quick align um, hotkey so you can just uh, click your object and then shift a and then click the object you want to align to just to quickly match them up so you don't have to go into orthographic views so i've created uh, sorry convert to another poly delete the lower half and shift drag as usual with the border and create a small uh, flared edge loop at the bottom to, to to give the impression that it's uh it's almost welded together you add your turbo smooth it's a handy trick you, you can pull that uh you'll see now in a sec when the turbo smooth goes on you know from a bit of a distance it it looks like it's welded it welded in there it's you know it says you haven't to model it all in one go a lot of the times it's a, well in fact all the time when you're creating complex sub sources i find wherever you can split an object up where it'd be split up in the real world you know, it's going to make your modeling life a lot easier. Uh, I think I might be pulling these verts down in the bottom half just to flatten it out a little bit. Maybe it doesn't work. But it's no harm in, in you know, in it looking a bit rough because uh, 
nothing's perfect obviously in the real world it's a good idea to transfer that over to your models unless of course you're creating something that you want to look perfect but little dings and bangs add a lot of realism to models that's the nook created check the ref and I'm going to model these uh, bell shapes these are simple, same again, sphere primitive. Use a variety of techniques, whichever is handy. Spleen modeling, um, starting with a plane and dragging from dragging edges, shift dragging edges, starting with, um, you know, primitives always try and start with, with a shape that's close to the shape you're trying to create. Half the work is done then your, for your base shape. Same again, delete the lower half, shift drag. match it up to the clock. The clock is obviously the, the photograph there's perspective. It's not full on so you just kind of have to eyeball it. That's what you always have to do when you, you have limited reference, you have limited camera angles. You just have to improvise an eyeball. So I'm using Swift Loop here to add some support edges of added uh, yeah, turbo smooth and now I'm probably nope, turbo smooth's gone. All right, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna attach the nut. I think. Yeah, I'm gonna attach. So that's why I removed the turbo smooth. Otherwise, it would have double, double subdivided if I had left it on. So select the vert in the center. Control click to convert the face selection. Grow them and then delete them. They're not gonna be seen in the render, so they're not needed. It's a waste of uh, <coughs> polygons. Right, so I'm just eyeballing that, getting it to look right. Attaching that again. It's another, you know, you can attach and detach all the time. It's same thing with modeling. You don't be worrying about detaching and, and reattaching. It's it's no big deal. It's a it's a common sort of a technique. Right, that's that created. Now I'm creating the uh, the top handle part here, starting with a a line, and it's. Enabling render and viewport. I use spleens, splines a lot of the time for modeling. They're brilliant for you know cylindrical shapes that are uh, the likes of this wires, cables, bars, um, or you know metal bars. A lot with lofting as well as lofting. It's an old tool to max, but it's a brilliant uh, tool for modeling. Right, so just uh, right click and select a. Uh, Bezier corner there and you can adjust the handles and pretty much get any uh, mathematical curve shape you can dream of set up your interpolation steps there you know we're going to be converting this to a little poly soap and turbo smooth so we don't need all that many right so we're happy with that and yeah, convert it out of a poly a handy trick there. Sometimes you get triangles inside those end of those end caps of the spline, so you can just select the two and hit grow, hit shrink, and then it'll, it'll select the triangles as well. Delete them. Now, we've got all the border dragging again, shift dragging, scale dragging. So I'm going to. Just adjusting the verts around to um, rotating them, scaling them, moving them, just to position them up with the reference. Shift dragging again. So just uh, before, it's always a good idea to adjust existing geometry before adding extra geometry because you can end up with a, a mess pretty quickly and it's a lot harder to uh, tweak verts and move things around when you have more geometry than you can, than you really need, you know, to get the basic form or the basic shape. And once you have that then you can add in your detail. Just 
It's just come with the reference. Grab the vert underneath there, but it looks like I'm moving that position, but it isn't going to be seen anyway. So we just uh, selected that border and then use the cap tool. You can find it your right click quad menu or else uh, down the command panel. I'm just using um, the cut tool, same thing, right click quad menu. I very rarely use the graphite tools unless it's for something specific. If I'm re topologizing the swift loop, obviously, um, a few other things, selection tools. and but very rarely, I'm so used to using Mac so long, so used to the command panel and the quad menu that. Um, I don't really use the graphic that much. Or the freeform tools aren't too bad either. Bits and pieces. But uh, yeah, still just just this, add an extra support loop in there. Add a turbo smooth, check the shape. I'm just going to use the inset tool in those faces just to create more support edges. But sometimes we have a slight pinch there in the corner where the vert is sticking out, but you know, sometimes it can add a bit to, uh, to the model, you know, where it's been bent there in real life, it's not going to be perfect. so that's good enough so just gonna align the pivot to world center axis so you can do that by going to the hierarchy panel effect pivot and then right click on the x spinner and that'll align your pivot so when you add the symmetry it's in exactly the right spot don't mind the reference as i said the um we only have to worry about our model once our model is modeled exactly to one half of the reference don't worry about the other side because the perspective isn't the true orthographic obviously because it's a photograph so we move that into position and scale them up I've got the edge constraint selected make sure to always check that if you're getting some funny results when you're moving birds around or Sometimes you could have the constraints on. When we're tweaking, remember as well when you when your turbo smooth is added to the model, it's gonna the cage of it's gonna pull all your um, your edges in, so it's the the volume of your mesh is gonna be sh shrank really. So it's another thing to bear in mind when you're when you're modeling with sub D's. To references as well sometimes you, when you add your turbo smooth well all the time you have to go back and slightly adjust again once you've smoothed it out so i think i'm going to scale these in because looking at the ref the edge of the nut is slightly protruding past uh, where it's inserted into the handle you constantly once you you can get all the main shapes in like you're always going to go back and adjust things, move them around. And once you have have a model to the reference, you know you can uh, move things around to suit your model. You know nobody's going to be coming around with a measuring tape, making sure you have it a hundred percent. So I'm thinking, you know, just that symmetry. Sometimes the the mirror tilt, it's not worth the hassle of messing around with normals and. All the rest of the symmetry always works. So next, the legs next. These are simple as well. I'm gonna steal, steal the top of the nut. Now shift drag an element and then you can clone it to its own object or to an element of the same object. So there we go, mirror tool. It's you know if I reset X forms and everything, 
it'll work. But as I say, when you're modeling, you're doing a quick, so whichever way works best there. I'm just rotating it with press A to put on angle snaps, and I'm rotating it in increments, setting your snap uh, options. So I just use that instead of messing around trying to get the mirror to work. Move them to position, remove the top part, deleting the element. Now I just rotate that flat because it'll be easier to uh, to model the lower part of the leg. Just wanted to get the, the size correct for us. We don't need them. Um, we don't need those. Oh yes, yeah, sure. And we'll just delete that. It's too much mess and trying to even if I detach that as an element and try to I just you know delete those faces. I was just trying something new. It's not worth it. You know, you're trying to get it. I'll, I'll just end up deleting that. Using the cylinder primitive. So drag that out. I think I'm sh yeah, uh, shit. Yeah. Quick align didn't work, the settings weren't correct. So I just opened up the align tool. Now I'm gonna set the sides. And I wanna set them some eight or 12. When you use a turbo smooth down, it gives you a nice rounded results rather than faceted if you try to hit at least eight, always look for at least eight edges when making a circular shape using sub D modeling. So we get that set up using the same trick, um, shift dragging and flaring out an edge loop at the bottom to give you that welded appearance. Now we'll just shift drag that in to hide the, uh, the gaps in the geometry. And scale those very soon. Give you the taper, it's easier to taper. You know, rather than adding shift dragging all the way up and trying to taper each time, just taper to the top and then you can swift loop edge loops in if you need them or connect whatever, maintain the, the volume. So I'm just shift dragging that border in. Move scale, you know, eyeball it then you can get a nice curve shape at the end. And I just capped it off and the cap at the bottom's and then gone as well, but it doesn't matter. It's not going to be seen. Position up the leg. Now we set the X form on that there because we rotate and scale it all over the place, so you can just go to your utilities tab. Um, reset X form and then <coughs> reset selected. Right click, collapse it down, and it'll reset all the horrible world and local scaling you did on the rotation. Um, or you can just add an X form modifier and collapse it down. Take here, I think I did. I did on the leg. You know, it's a mess. So I think there's a bit of, bit of craziness here, but I realized that I can just use the circular shape I already have. So a lot of the times in your modeling as well, always trying, you know, you can steal different different elements from different parts of the mesh to make new parts you know rather than creating a new primitive converting it shape all that sort of stuff position you can just you know this kind of stuff is uh, bashing stuff together 
from existing parts. That was just to take um, take that down into the body. Same again, flare at the bottom to give you that welded kind of look. Or that smooth transition between two surfaces that aren't actually, you know, it's physically attached. Uh, I think that was the bevel too. Now I'm just using I'm just using the edge constraint there to move it back so I know I don't have to try and find a move it by eye in world space with the view um gizmo or screen or whatever local is handy like that to move in with an edge constraint. faces up there that I don't need so I just hid that element to get out of my way and uh, I'm just gonna swift loop in there select those polys that was uh, you can select rings of polys like that by um, clicking one and, and then Control click on another and select the ring. So just delete them, we don't need them. Plus they were coming down through the mesh above it. Right, so that's that part finished. Now uh, this little hammer, just use a box primitive. around a bit <laughs> getting it into position when you're happy then swift loop just bang them in nice and quick support edges for your sub D modeling so it's, it's one of the best features added in Max in a long time modeling was just a uh, Bring it down then out of, out of view, at the bottom of the stem of that hammer. And I think I'm. Yeah, just gonna just to pivot and bring it down to the bottom so it'll rotate from that point later on when I wanna rotate it. So it looks like it's hitting the bell. Cylinder primitive, great the top of the hammer. Uh, shift A for quick align so it's centered up down <coughs> on the lower part. Now we're going to use symmetry to model this so you don't have to model one side. So just set it up roughly half. You can be a lot more accurate than this if you want, but a lot of the time you're, you're wasting your time, you know, unless you're working CAD data or very accurate drones or whatever. This, like, this kind of stuff is. You know, a lot of it's eyeballing as well. If it looks right, it is right. As the saying goes. So more shift dragging, scaling and moving while holding down shift. I just end up manually shaffering here because the increments on the spinner are too high. Now yeah, it's going to be a lot of shift dragging here. You know, you can drag out the rough shapes and then come back and refine it with a swift loop or a chamfer tool or just scale and edge loops. Once you get the, the basic shapes in the forms, it's capped off. Swift loop, see? Yeah. It's uh, you know, it's such a quick way of doing it. Shift 
few more support loops just to harden the end of that off. Symmetry and then adjust it, move that back slightly. And without you to position that will automatically weld. You know the threshold's too high, so I right click the spinner to zero and click once up to give you a low increment and it'll weld those back together. And if you go to symmetry and you're stacking, right click and collapse too, it'll, it'll keep the turbo smooth above you, it'll keep anything above in the stack. And so that's too big. Get it to move it up. Just be careful sometimes of scaling. Whole objects sometimes if your verts can scale in ways you don't want them to. In that case, there though, I wanted to scale that out just to flatten it out because I don't want it to be perfectly cylindrical. So we're just gonna scale that in. I'm gonna cap that and then use that face, you know, as new geometry as I say, rather than go and create the cylinder, fitting it in there. You know, it's just a lot easier to do that. Not a turbo smooth, as I say, it's a flat surface there. You know, you can usually I'd do that where I'm scaling the face up. If there is any strange errors in the mesh, they'll be, they'll be right there in, in the center. I won't be seeing, unless you can see it in the render. It's not to be worried about. Of course, you couldn't bring that into ZBrush be, because it'd be a mess. But for these purposes, for these purposes, it's fine. So this is the glass of named a few things, always got a deep to name everything <laughs> you know, rather than having a million different things you have to name later on, but when you're in the flow of modeling you know, it's sometimes you just keep going put on the long finger um, I've added the shell modifier, but it's uh, I think the um, the normals were flipped or something, so Check around, you know, a lot of times you can get unwanted behaviors in your mesh, so just watch out for that as well. It's um, it can be a pain in the arse trying to fix it sometimes. So I just ended up, yeah, capping that off, stealing that again. Uh, the shell, it's, it's fine then, it's just the, those faces were inverted back around on themselves on the other part, so it was no good. So the part behind, I think, is the clock face, it's, it only needs to be single-sided faces, but this is, I'm adding the shell here for solid geometry because it's going to be glass, so when we add the shader, we want the refractions to have a, a solid mesh. Move the reference out of the way now. We don't really need it. We're gonna create the hands now, so we know they're gonna be in the center of the mesh. So. Start from cylinder primitive again. Scale in the face. Scale in again. Move that out slightly just to create a little point on the end. Delete the the face of the back we won't see 
And you can you you can keep those spaces and use the extrude and bevel tools, but I, I think it's much handier and quicker. A bit more old school just to <coughs> shift drag the border. And later on, I don't think I showed in this video, but later on I I create a couple extra cylinders. I just steal the geometry from the clock face uh, that go in behind this. Um, this little peg that holds the clock hands in. It's no big deal, you see it on the model later on, it's it's simple to add in. The selection troubles with Max's old viewport selection. So I just that box I used for the stem and the hammer. We just stole that and we'll um use that for the uh the smaller rectangular hands and the clock. Just cap that end off using the um the bridge tool, select those three rows of edges that are facing each other use the bridge tool and then just manually cut <laughs> if you get the cut tool to work just manually cut those edges back in there we go nope take the cut tool it's gotten, in one stage it was perfect I can't remember what version but in the last version or two it seems to have gotten worse behaviour them in, eyeball them, you can move that edge then, border back in, it goes through the clock face. Shorter than the, uh, the other one, so it's a clone in place rather than shift drag a clone in place so I could measure it up against the other one, the longer one. Now we're all tailored, but I'm, I end up having just the, the, the pivot needs to be centered up on the. Uh, a little cone shape rather than uh, up the top because obviously it's going to rotate in the wrong place so none of the align tails are working for me there so I end up just manually moving it down eyeballing it same with that one as I say we're not rigging this for animation or anything so it doesn't have to be perfect The, uh, these hands using spline shapes you know these are they don't have to be sub these because um, they're just flat objects so uh, the spline tools are, are brilliant for this kind of stuff but forget about using sub these with that kind of geometry because <laughs> if you wanted to use it you'd have to connect up all you'll see what I mean when I convert this across to an edible poly You'll have to connect up all the rows of edges and take a while. So for something like this, we can just extrude and bevel faces rather than it doesn't need to be sub D's, you know. So select your different verts and you can uh, change them to corner verts or bezier corners or bezier handles, the handles on them to 
as I say, you can match up any curve shape you want. Just takes a little bit of tweaking, and once you get used to the uh, how the handles work, it's the same as any other Peugeot handles, and any other application, oh shop, After Effects, whatever. It's the same, um, same sort of stuff. So just tweak around there till you you're happy. And don't worry about being perfect, obviously first time around. Just get the shape in that you want and then it can be easily adjusted. Don't worry about getting it exactly perfect first time around. You know, you can just delete that one. Change those ones to a corner. And then just change them. Right click, quad menu, and then <coughs> select a very right click to get up the quad menu. Then you can change whichever style of, of handle you want. Or sorry, of uh, vertex, so corner, smooth, bezier, or bezier, uh, corner. Oh yeah, I can use the, the command panel there, the refine tool. Just click on any part of the segment of the spline and you can add in extra verts. The 2D tools in Maxo are underrated a lot of the time, underused, but they're brilliant. Different combinations, they're brilliant. Very flexible. So I'm just going to select the two faces. Now yeah, you can see where it's just a one joint end gone. You would have to connect all those edges up if you wanted to subdue it. And give it, just give it a slight bevel, just to catch the light when it's when it's rendered. Never have, uh, you know, perfectly ninety degree square edges on your on your geometry. It just looks terrible when, when it's rendered. And you always want to, uh, you know, no surface in the real world is like that, so you always want to add, add a slight chamfer or even mess up your edges. Or, you know, a lot of people bring their meshes into ZBrush these days, you know, you can add some nice dings and bangs, rough up the edges. But, or even in Max, you can manually do it by cutting out parts of your mesh with the cut tool, deleting it, joining back up to filling in the holes then. Or just use a noise modifier, a space modifier. I think there's even a free script to, to um, mess up edges, but it only works on, on 90 degree corners. Right, so that's our clock hands done. Position them up. We'll be moving these around slightly later on when I add in the uh, the two uh, cylindrical shapes between the clock face and the the little cone. You'll see it later on. Anyway, I don't do it in this video, but you'll see it later on. Now I'm just testing out how it's going to look when it's sitting flat. I just uh, selected all the objects up to the group drop down and create a group so that they'll have a centralized pivot. So if you try, to, if you select all the objects and try to rotate them as a as a selection, they'll they'll use their own local pivots. But you know, group it's a handy way to move them all around. See. Um, you know, final adjustments there. It's, I want the the clock body to be wider, so you know it's it's easily done, as you can see there. Close the group again. You can open the group and um, the group drop down just to open it, ungroup it, explode the group, close the group. <coughs> I'm just checking here actually to see if the legs 
and the back arse of the clock there are aligned on the ground and the air so i think this is the end of the modeling video and